And now let's add some emissive. And in fact, we have to go into our textures sets again. And we're going to go over here and we're going to say, give me an emissive channel. So now that I go back to my layers, I'm going to make sure emissive is turned off. Yeah, emissive is off. So now let's make a new fill layer and we'll call this emissive. And actually this could be emissive and color. We can use our emissive in our base. So we'll turn off everything but our emissive and our color. And for our base color, we'll go ahead and make that kind of like a red. And then for our emissive, we'll make that like a bright red. Uh, now, when we're looking at reference and stuff, it kind of like, um, so let's see a good example, kind of gets a little darker around the edges. So we can just dial that in. If we look at the 2D only, you're going to see we have a nice circle uh, right in the middle here. So in fact, it's pretty easy what we can do. We can go over here to another fill layer. And on this fill layer, we're going to go back to procedurals. We're going to go all the way down here to polygon 2 and drop that right into our base color. And we're going to turn off everything again but color and emissive. And we're going to call this dilate. So we can go down here and we can, uh, under attributes, nope, under parameters, Nope, under pattern, we can go over here, we can crank up the sides to make it a little bit, just a little more circular. We can change the scale if we want to kind of scale this in and out. We can also change the gradient so we can kind of tighten that gradient up more or less. And we can actually do it less, more or less on the emissive too. So if you want the color to be a little tighter, but the emissive to have a sharper fall off, uh, you can do that. And how you're going to control that is over here under the base color, we're going to set that to multiply. So now the base color is shining through, but no emissive is coming through. In fact, if we hit... Uh, go down here to our channel, you're going to see emissive is pure black. However, if we go over here to base color, our base color is getting that nice multiply, and again, we can dilate uh, that out. Uh, in order to get that to work for our emissive, again, pretty easy. We have our emissive here. We just drop that uh, polygon onto emissive here, and then we drop this down to emissive, and we say you are also multiply. So now when I go over here to our emissive channel, we can go down here and we can dial in attributes for this. Oh, I'm sorry, the pattern uh, sliders for this. So we can make it more side, so it's a little bit uh, just like a nice fall off here. You can change the gradient. So this can be a very uh, sharp curve. You can change that blur intensity if you wanted to blur out more or less. And now when we hit M, we can go through here and now we have a uh, height and emissive on here. Now, I always like to have a base layer at the very bottom that's, again, like a catch-all. So I'm going to put underneath here, just call that base. And for that roughness here, I'm going to make sure, I'm just trying to look at my reference here. It looks like it's fairly shiny. So I'm just going to dial in uh, the roughness for that. There we go. Now, uh, in your real-time preview, uh, the emissive isn't going to like uh, cast any light reflections. I'm trying to see if there's an example I can show you. Like in here, you can see it's kind of red bleeding on and reflecting off of here. Uh, but when we go to iRay, we'll be able to do that. Now, that's a cool trick if you have everything um, stacked. And basically, if I go in here, so we have 3D and 2D, so we can see both uh, the 3D and the 2D, 2D layout. I'm going to go to the iris material, and you see in this instance, in my other one, it was just one big iris right in the middle. In this instance, we have it uh, unstacked, so basically I can do like a dim eyeball or one red eyeball, one green eyeball, so they're separate, but uh, we're not going to be able to just do uh, the technique we did earlier, but we can still get around that and we can still use some dilation and do a little bit of cleanup, and this will actually show a lot more functionality, uh, which I think you'll like. So let's go up here, and we're going to make a new fill layer, and we're going to call this color and emissive, and because I'm sneaking this in and I haven't set it up all the way yet, we're going to go in here to texture settings, and we're going to add an emissive channel so that we can paint color and emissive, not just color. Now, we've already put the height in there. That's that knurling. Uh, and then we have color and emissive over here. So I'm going to turn off everything except for color and emissive. For the base color, of course, we want that to just be um, maybe, I don't know, a red like this, let's say. And for emissive, we'll go ahead and turn that on. And the emissive, we'll go ahead and make uh, red as well. Now, I'm going to right click here and we're going to say add. Oh, it's going to go right off the screen, but go all the way to the top here and say add a black mask. So that's just going to mask out that red color and emissive. Uh, I also like to have a catch-all. So I'm going to make a new fill layer here. We're going to drag it to the bottom. Let's call this base. And you know how I'm only like, this This only has height turned on, and this only has color and emissive. All these other channels are going to end up probably being baked out eventually. Um, so I want a catch-all in order just to make sure that everything, every channel gets represented. So I'm going to take this base color, and I'll make it uh, very, you know, not to be black, but very dark. And then metallic, I'll leave off. Roughness, I'm going to make this very rough. Usually for emissive things, I'll go ahead and make it rough. Although, you know, this is going to end up 
you know, being kind of a shiny plastic. So in that case, you know what? Take it back. I'm going to actually make this roughness. I like this. I can always add another layer on top of this that has roughness information that'll override this or multiply with it or however I decide to mix those. Uh, but for now, I'll just go ahead and leave it that type of roughness. Uh, and then normal and height uh, and emissive, I'll just leave it black. So right now we have on top of all of that, a new layer with a black uh, mask, completely masking out all of my color and emissive. So I want those to show through. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to paint. Uh, there's a couple different ways you can paint. We have our 2D view over here and a 3D view over here. If we want to, we can paint white in our 2D view and that's going to expose whatever is in this layer, which is in this case a red color and a red emissive. Or you can go over here and you can paint it in the 3D view. And in the 3D view, if you remember, you can go over here and you can turn on symmetry. So even though this is unstacked, you can turn on symmetry and you can, can uh, propagate that brush stroke across an axis. Of course, uh, I'm going to come out and turn off the height layer so you can see this a little bit better. I'll go ahead and move this light around so we can see. Uh, so we have two identical brush strokes on here. If you wanted to, you could go into the 2D view now, and I'm going to hold down Control and uh, right-click, drag, and I can, um, if I tap X, that's going to switch that grayscale value at the very bottom here. Uh, you can also just right-click and see at the bottom here, uh, grayscale value. If I tap X, oops, it's going to go white and to black, or you can do mid values, but we'll just go set it to black and you can uh, paint across this actually, wow. So with symmetry on, even in the 3D, 2D view, I didn't even know this, uh, it'll paint with symmetry. So let's turn symmetry off and let's say, you know what, I want this side to be dim. You can take down like your stroke opacity or your flow and you can like just kind of dim it out like this, or you can keep your stroke opacity up and you can turn, you can just go ahead and paint this out with black and then you can turn your flow down and then you can use, I'm using my mouse to kind of stamp this. So we'll go ahead and hit X and now we can have like one kind of dim uh, eyeball. But we'll go ahead and undo all that. We'll make this generally uh, the same across here. And of course holding that control and then uh, right mouse up and down is going to create that hardness. And the reason I'm kind of doing a soft fall off is number one, the reference has kind of a soft fall off, but it'll also allow me to adjust that if I again turn off the height channel here. Uh, so we have red base color and red emissive shining through. If I hit C, we can cycle through our channels here. So our base color, there's our red. Uh, keep hitting C until we hit emissive and there we go. There's our red emissive. So we're in good shape. But now uh, let's say we wanna make this not quite such a soft fall off. Well, that's pretty easy. So if I alt tap here, you're gonna see this is the mask. We'll hit M and then alt tap our mask and you see, oh, the mask is actually causing that soft fall off. Well, I can control that. I can right click this mask and I can go in here and I can say add a levels. And now this levels is going to control how contrasty this mask is. So I can go over here and I can simply just crank uh, this, this right value over here and I can just move it over to the left and that'll kind of dilate that pupil. So you can use that to control and it's not destructive. You can turn it on and off and, uh, or you can just kind of go back and adjust this as needed. So I'm going to hit M over my 3D view and now you're going to see the results of this emissive. And you can always go back here and change this. You know, if you want to go through and say color and emissive, ah, you know what, I don't want, uh, I want, I want green or blue or whatever. Now, when you mix blue base color with a red emissive, you're going to kind of start mixing those colors. So, you know, be aware of that. Sometimes it's cool to do like maybe a base color of a red and then emissive and an orange. Uh, but we'll go ahead and keep both of these red. Now let's go back up here and we'll go back to just our 3D view. And I'm going to talk about this later, but one thing I do want to bring up, if you go in here to the shader view, or excuse me, the shader settings, this is where we're going to talk about some sort of scattering, or right above that you're going to see emissive intensity, it's set to 1. You can crank that up, and at first glance it's not going to do much, it's going to be like, oh, it just kind of over cranks it, and uh, I lose my dilation, so that's not too cool. Where that does get a little cooler is if you go in here to display settings, and you go down here to the bottom, and you activate post effects and you turn on glare. Uh, let's, let's get rid of the Elton John glare here and we're gonna go here, just gonna put that on bloom. Uh, you can change again these remap factors and the threshold and stuff and the overall luminance. But when we go back to the shader settings and we play around the emissive intensity, then I can over crank that emissive and now you're gonna see, oh, there's, there's that emissive really shining through. And another thing too, and this actually looks a little bit cooler. Let's go up here to display and scroll all the way to the top. We'll go ahead and turn on shadows, and I like doing a nice intensive shadow. And now you can move the shadows around, and now you can see, oh wow, that emiss is really shining through. Uh, however, we're not getting real screen screen space, or it's not getting real uh, reflections in here, so it's not shining uh, red on my object. Uh, we're gonna get to this later, but just a little sneak preview. I'm gonna go ahead and hop into iRay. And uh, now that I'm in iRay, I, I kind of did a sneaky swap of the model here when we went in iRay, but we're in iRay, all the, all the same settings around there, except for let's go down here to the glare and actually let's go in here to the shader settings. I'm gonna overcrank that emissive intensity. 
And then when I go down to display settings under glare, it doesn't have quite the same effect in here, unfortunately. But what we are getting is uh, that reflection of the red emissive onto the eyeball. So you're not getting that overcranked uh, post effect in here, apparently, but uh, at least you are getting that reflection of the red onto the underlying uh, reflective metal there.